Hi, my name is Colin Graham from Ancient uh, Evil City Crawler Terrain, and uh, I'm just uh, going to show you quickly how I do some uh, some little stuff in ZBrush. Basically, how I get uh, sculpted files out into um, uh, into the, the correct format uh, for an STL file. So uh, I have my fully sculpted version here of my uh, of my pillar, and I'm using I'm I'm basically uh, cloning this uh, um, this pillar from the uh, uh, the, the Cursed City box set. I really like that pillar, and uh, they use it all over the place in the in the terrain pieces or the little base pieces of the characters. And I wanted to make some more pieces um, so we could chop them up and uh, and uh, let's see if I got one right here. This is a prototype that I that I printed out, and uh, I wanted a, a chopped up version that I could that we could uh, we could we could use to make other bases. And actually, each of these pieces here, each of these pieces is actually a separate piece in the in the sculpt, um, and uh, I can separate all that, and uh, and, and basically uh, I can go through all that and uh, and and make individual pieces out of this uh, and export them as well. But right now I have my high res mesh and ZBrush is uh, you know 11.2 million polys. Uh, you know we got tons of detail in here. We've stamped in all this broken rock detail and porous detail. And I mean this is very very little of this is going to be able to show up unless I print this super fine. Um, you know, but uh, you know I like to have a nice looking sculpt and then we can down res it from there. So this uh, this uh, subtool has 11 million polys, and then the next thing that we do is we that we dynamesh it. Um, so dynamesh is important because it's going to seal for especially for 3D printable stuff because it's going to seal it all into one um, object that we can we can kind of print together. Um, it, essentially, it's going to skin all these pieces together into one uh, one mesh. Uh, so this I think is an important step if you're going to be 3d printing it's a it's a good way and you can see that between these two that it is a little bit less sharp but that's a pretty negligible amount of detail considering this thing is probably going to be like that big you can barely see it um, and then from there what we do is uh, I we have to decimate it so that 35 uh, 35,000 is going to be about three and a half meg uh, it's um, it's typically a thousand uh, polys um, uh, per per meg uh, for file size, and uh, so that's a pretty decent decimation there. We still we still retains all, a lot of the detail. Um, you know, if I go in here, you can see where the uh, the decimation master has left detail where it matters, and it's made flatter shapes where it has. But there's a lot of texture on this, so th even even here, 35 is really crunching it down a lot, and um, I just wanted to see what we'd take if we took it down to 14,000, uh, uh, that would be 1.4 meg. This, and, but this will process a lot faster on a printer, and this would look great on an FDM printer. Uh, you know, that's, that's most of those details on a very, very fine setting would look great. So I think I'll actually include both of these versions here. So what we should do here is we should rename this to, this should be um, uh, let's see, CC pillar. Uh, no, I was calling this one 35, and then I, because I know that that's 35k, and I'm going to rename this one to CC, and then I'm going to name this one 15. Oh, name it five. Let's so rename it to 15. Okay, and it's important to name these tools before they, um, these parts of the sub tools before they go out, because the 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 the. the um, the 3D print export is gonna gonna name those. The other thing to just be careful of. Oh, actually, I see we have a problem here that this is not flat on the bottom. That's unfortunate. I should have trimmed that before I'd done that. But that's okay. I can actually use one of the tools to trim it now. Um, let's use the trim curve. So that actually needs to be flat across the bottom. So take your perspective value off. And I'm gonna use my brush trim curve here. And I'm just going to run this across the bottom. I'm just going to run it ever so slightly across the bottom like that. Not quite enough. And this this is important because I wanted to get it to print flat. That's still not enough. I'm going to go a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive. Try again. There we go. So that's a nice flat polygon surface. We can just double check with polys turned on how that looks what I want to w w look for here with this is I want to make sure that I haven't got any flat bits here that it's actually trimmed it and not just flattened something out looks pretty good around the edges 
and we're going to need to run this. We'll probably want to run this through NetFab to just to validate the mesh. Let me do that with the 15 mesh as well there too. Again, we'll just go in nice and tight. Trim, drag it across. I can kind of line it up. I just want to take the bottom sliver off of that. Not quite, it's not quite flat. I think as I trimmed it, the last time I trimmed it, I was in perspective mode, so I don't think it was quite flat. There you go, nice and flat. Let's just double check around the edges. Make sure that we haven't flattened anything out. This really did trim it and didn't create any particular problems. That should be okay there. There's a couple little bits and pieces here, but you know, this, these, these things, the, the, the printer will interpret those little details and some of those details will just get, get erased. So that's pretty much good to go. Now, the last thing I have in my scene here is I have this um, 20 centimeter cube. Uh, let me just turn on some of these other tools here so you can see what this looks like. Uh, let's not turn on that one. That one's heavy. Let's turn on this one. Okay. So this 20 centimeter cube um, is the, the, this is the best way that I found to get the right scale um, so that the ZBrush actually understands the scale of, of something. So I know this is, this cube is 20 centimeters. I created it in a CAD software and I exported it as an STL and it is exactly 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So I go up to my Z plug into my 3D print hub. And the first thing I'll notice is ZBrush thinks, oh no, I have to have this tool selected. Okay. ZBrush thinks this tool is 25.4, which is one inch, right? Uh, it thinks it's a one inch um, box, but it's not. Let's move this out of the way here. It's not. So let's go to uh, here. Let's go to uh, with the cube selected. Let's update the size ratios. We'll set it to 20 millimeters. And now the cube is the, the, the correct size. And what I'm going to do is with this tool selected, I'm going to go to the Z plugin and I'm going to go to the export to STL button here. Just using the default settings and I'm going to create a new folder for this and I'm going to call this um, uh, detailed export too because what it's going to do is it's going to dump every file in this, this tool into its own tool so I've got this one selected I'm just going to click save and then it's going to give me this option so it says do you want to save it as this this sub tool these names and I'm because I did my naming over here I'm just going to click on choice two and that's going to basically use the names of the the pieces that are that are that are there in the sub tool uh, down below there. It's going to use those uh, as the names of the output files. So now I need to just go to my output files. Uh, let me see where they went here to Curse City Pillar and Detailed Export Two. And let's see what we got here. You know, view uh, extra large icons. Um, okay, and so what it's done is it's uh, well, it's it's thinking about this because these are really really big files. Let's just see what size it is. So let's put my 15, my 35, and the two other tools. Uh, I'm going to go to details, so I can see one of these is massive. Like look at the size of this thing, uh, 600 and 1.3. So let's just I don't want to gum up my hard drive. I'm just going to delete those. These are the two that I want. So now if I if I grab this, I can go into, I can see this right away in a 3D viewer, in, in the uh, Microsoft 3D viewer, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, I, can, I can just kind of get a sense for, for what it is there. And I can start to do some things in here too. I can also flatten out the base on this. This is actually a really cool program. Uh, another uh, software that I might want to try to look at this in though is, uh, I use Lychee Slicer. Um, for doing stuff in, th in 3D. So, oh, by the way, Cura will, uh, I'll open Lychee Slicer, but at the same time, I'll just quickly look at this in Cura. Let's clear our build plates, and let's drag those to, oh, Lychee Slicer's trying to do something here. Let's just drag those into Cura while we're waiting for Lychee Slicer to open up. And uh, Cura doesn't really care about anything. <laughs> Um, there is this little oh, so there's this little bit that kind of hangs off here. This one is the which one is which? That's the 15. That's the 35. Yeah, so I sliced it a little bit different. There's a little nub nub in here. Let's see what in the preview f version of this. Let's let Kira show us what it's going to do. I'm just going to turn off my brim settings here. 
and yeah, like Kira really just won't care. It'll just make it'll make it'll make um, pads out of this. No no questions asked. Right, um, and that's dynamic quality one point one. So you can see you can get a sense here for what kind of details are coming through uh, on this. If you want better detail, it's always advisable to avoid things like flat like that because it's gonna do this sort of weird interpretative thing here that you might want to smooth that out afterwards. A little bit of putty. It doesn't doesn't handle that layer well, but see, it handles the detail better here. Now let's just go to Leachy Slicer for a second, and let's add those two f f files and see if they will work or not. So let's see where do we go, Leachy Slicer. Oh, we got lucky. It liked both of those. Did it? No, it did not. So it's going to basically, it wants to use Netfab to do this. Now, I typically don't use Netfab through Leechy. Uh, I actually have this set for orthographic. Let's turn that off. I typically don't do that. I normally go to the, um, to the Netfab homepage. Um, you can use a free Autodesk account for that. It looks like uh, this. Um, and you can do that um, and just drag your model in here and it's going to spit that out and then it's going to save you a version of that that's cleaned up. So like if I go here to, I don't know what to tell, I'm not sure which one of these it's telling me. Oh, actually it's telling me that there's no problems with these. Your problem, you may need to reuse the repair tool. Normally, if it's a, if it's really got a problem with it, so we're using the Dynamesh the way that we did really kind of really kind of help that. Um, but if I wanted to take that, I would I normally run when if I'm if I'm sending files for somebody else, I typically put them through Netfab. Uh, where do we go here to detailed export and Netfab, and I just grab both of those. I guess I can't do both at the same time, can I? Okay, let's take Netfab, let's take the 15, drop it here. And this is a three, this is three, actually it's telling me it's three megs, why is it telling me that? It's 2.14, so Netfab says it's three. 35 is 4.8, so it's a little bit higher than, it's not exactly 35. Thousand polys is 33.5 meg. It's, it's it's close to that. It's a good estimation. So use a little bit more. Now this is done. I'm just going to download this. I'm going to save this as, and um, I'm going to put this here into my pillars detailed exports two, and it's going to have underscore fix at the end, and then that's going to come out. That file is going to be dumped back here. And actually, you see, it is slightly smaller. But it has fixed up some issues in there. If I take that back to Leachy Slicer uh, and drop it in there, it's good to go as well too. So uh, I I would typically print these like this straight on the plate in Leachy Slicer. I just want to double check that the yeah, bases are all flat and good. I would put that right on the base. And if you're using something like the Wham Bam Flex Plate, which I'm about to install on my printer because I've been kind of pulling these things off with a scraper. Uh, the, that would just those things would just pop right off and that would probably look the best it's going to create a little lip around the bottom when you're burning layers it's going to create a little lip but because this is kind of tapered down like that you probably won't even notice um, and if you use transition layers it'll, it'll burn burn in less and less as it goes up so this is a really good way of doing it so that's uh, it, so pardon me that's in a short and, and um in a short uh short not that short in uh but that's sort of in a nutshell the way that i kind of go around um and take my high-res model from zbrush i do a uh a um a, a, um let's see what i need to do take my high-res model and then i do a dynamesh and then i will decimate it and i might decimate it at a couple of different settings just to kind of find the one that i think looks the best and uh and then i will use the cube the ref cube uh, to export the ref cube to be able to know the 20 centimeters. So I use that to set my settings here so that, it, that, that ZBrush knows that that's the scale of this object matches. I'll do my export. I'll export all my subtools, which I've named, and then I'll put those subtools through NetFab. Um, and then once it comes to NetFab, then it should be all good to go. And then I can dump it into either Leachy Slicer or I can dump it into Kira. And there you go.